Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard. If you enjoy species specific hair and husbandry videos, then be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're alerted anytime I upload a new video. Apolopis species columbia, also known as the pumpkin patch tarantula, is a highly sought after dwarf tarantula known for its bright orange and deep black coloration and gorgeous pattern. Its scientific name comes from the root word hapalo, which means simple, and the pus, which translates to foot, and the common name refers to the pumpkin color of this tea that some even say resembles the look of a pumpkin patch due to the pattern. There are two types of the species that you most likely see noted when looking to purchase this tarantula. There is the Groot, meaning the large form, and the Klein, meaning the small form. The Groot is known to grow to about 3 to 4 inches, while the Klein typically doesn't get larger than 2 and a half inches or so. Males of this species will be smaller in size, mature in about a year, and only live for 3 or 4 years, while females live about 8 to 10 years and mature in as little as 2 years. This species is endemic to the Pacific coast of Colombia, where it is accustomed to the warmer temperature and higher humidity. Being a New World Tarantula, this tea does not possess medically significant venom. And being a dwarf tarantula, its fangs are much smaller than normal teas, and one would assume much less painful if you were to be bit. I've also noticed that its urticating hair seem to be much less irritating than other species, but could potentially still cause serious problems if they were to get in your eyes, nose, or mouth. So keep the tea away from your face and be sure to wash your hands before touching your face anytime that you handle your tea or are moving things around in its enclosure. Being a dwarf tarantula, they do not require large enclosures and they're especially tiny as spiderlings. I keep my spiderlings in a 30 or 50 dram vial, the type of vial most juvenile tarantulas are shipped in when you order them online. I also have a link in my Amazon store under enclosures where you can purchase them if you have none available. I provide very small ventilation holes using a thumbtack to ensure that there is no chance of the spiderling escaping through an air hole. I fill the vial up about three quarters of the way with substrate and start a little burrow hole for the sling to retreat into and begin making its own burrow. I put in a little sphagnum moss to provide some cover and anchor points for the tarantula's web and it also helps keep the humidity up. I keep the substrate damp and drop a little water on its web once or twice a week so we can get a drink when it needs. If mold starts to grow in the substrate, I will let it dry out before moistening the substrate again. I keep juveniles in basic acrylic juvenile enclosures filled about halfway up with substrate as this species tends to still enjoy its burrow at this size. I also place branches, fake plants, or thin slivers of cork bark around the enclosure for the tea to use as anchor points as they tend to web up their enclosure and it helps them feel more secure and comfortable. I keep the substrate a little damp and provide a water dish I keep filled with clean water at all times. I let the substrate dry out before overflowing the water dish again to minimize mold growth. I do not miss my pumpkin patch enclosures as I find keeping a water dish full and overflowing it to dampen the substrate provides ample humidity for this species. And for adults, I keep my pumpkin patch teas in a one to two and a half gallon enclosure filled halfway with substrate. And again, I put in some branches and plants for the tea to use as anchor points for its webbing. This species is a prolific webber and will create some gorgeous web tunnels if given the chance. Now I feed my spiderlings flightless fruit flies two to three times a week. I drop in three or four flies at a time and I don't feed them for about a day or two after a molt. That gives them a little time to harden up. Spiderlings are ready to eat much sooner after a molt than adult tarantulas. 
For juveniles, I usually drop in one or two small crickets every week and make sure the cricket is no larger than two-thirds the size of the tarantula, and I remove any uneaten prey within 24 hours. If they don't eat, I'll wait a week or two before trying to feed them again and make sure to remove the prey quickly if the tea appears to be near a molt. For adults, I drop in a medium or large-sized cricket once a week. Again, making sure that the cricket isn't much larger than two-thirds the size of the tea. Also at this stage, I'll mix it up sometimes with a small dubia roach or mealworms. And again, I remove any uneaten prey within 24 hours or even sooner if the tea is near pre-molt. I don't want to leave live prey wandering around the enclosure when the tea starts to molt, as it could stress out the tarantula and possibly endanger it if the cricket attacks it while it's molting or shortly after. I wait about a week to two weeks after a molt before attempting to feed the tarantula again, making sure to give it plenty of time to harden up. Now this tarantula is very docile, though a little skittish. Mine have never kicked any hairs or shown me a threat pose, and usually they just retreat into their burrow anytime I disturb their enclosure. If your pumpkin patch is acting defensive and shows you a threat pose, you may want to look into how you have the enclosure set up and consider reconfiguring the layout to give the tarantula more places to retreat and web up so it feels more secure and comfortable. As adults, my pumpkin patches spend a lot of time out in the open and on display. They can be a very quick little tea, so I refrain from holding mine in most cases as I don't want to risk them getting away or falling from my hands and injuring themselves if they tried to bolt off. Now this tea is fairly hardy and easy to care for and people seem to have a lot of success breeding them, though I have not yet had the opportunity to breed them myself. These teas are very brightly colored and gorgeous to look at and make for a great display tarantula to add to your collection. They are also fairly inexpensive, and a lot of the time you get them as freebies when you order from an online dealer. Just be aware that these spiders are very tiny as slings and can be a little worrisome for you if you haven't kept tiny slings before. But luckily, they're fast-growing species, so they won't stay that small for long. This is such a cool tarantula, and personally, I'm just really fond of the dwarf species right now. I think what I like the most about this species is the fact that it acts kind of semi-arboreal. Of course, they do their burrowing and stuff when they're young, but I like tarantulas that really web up their enclosure and spend a lot of time just kind of hanging out on the web. It's also kind of interesting that there's two different types of them, both the small and the large variety. The first one I got was a small, but the one I have right now behind me, that one is a large. And it is a noticeable size difference. They're such a docile tarantula, very calm, but they can be a little bolty. I did just rehouse mine from its juvenile enclosure into this Exoterra Nano, and it seems to really be enjoying that. I gave it a hide and some branches to really web up the place, but it'll probably take a while before it's completely webbed out. Now, anytime I've had to rehouse these tarantulas, it's always gone very smoothly. They just take a little prodding with a straw or the paintbrush, and they usually will just crawl right out of their old enclosure into their new one. Of course, I always have a catch cup handy just in case they bolt. Now, from time to time, I've let mine crawl around on my hands during a rehouse, but I don't intentionally handle them just because they can be so bolty and being such a small tarantula I would really be worried about them falling really any distance at all so if you're gonna handle it do it at your own risk now you would be hard-pressed to find a tarantula with such a cool pattern those bright orange and deep blacks really set it apart and it's a must-have in anyone's collection I've seen a lot of really cool enclosure designs online where people actually made the enclosure look like a pumpkin patch my little T has never given me a threat pose never kicked any hairs at me and has a very intense feeling response. Sometimes it's a little goofy, it'll strike the cricket and miss it, which I always find hilarious. Now if you enjoyed this video and think I did my job well, be sure to hit that like button, it means a lot to me. And for all things Tarantula Collective related, from merchandise to social media, check out my website, thetarantulacollective.com. I've got links down below in the description to the Tarantula Collective Amazon store, as well as some other affiliate links. So if you want to support the channel, be sure to check that out. Now if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe down below. and. Feel Feel free to share this video with your friends and Facebook groups. Help me get the word out about the channel. Now the news you've all been waiting for. Now if you don't have a pumpkin patch in your collection, or you just want to add a few more, I've got some great news for you. Over my Facebook group, The Tarantula Collective, we are having a pumpkin carving contest where you can carve, paint, or decorate a pumpkin 
in any kind of tarantula theme, and we will be putting all of the entries up in a poll, and the winner is gonna win a very awesome prize. Our friends over at Fear Not Tarantulas have been kind enough to donate a three pack of the Hapalopus species Columbia. So the winner of the pumpkin carving contest is gonna win that three pack, shipping is included. Of course, due to US regulations, this contest is only open for people inside the United States. So for all of you all in other countries, I'm very sorry. But if you haven't joined the Facebook group, be sure to do that. There's over 7,000 members in there right now. So if you're not a member, you kind of have 7,000 friends you haven't even met yet. All the details for the contest and rules for entry, all that information will be in a pin post in the Facebook group. So be sure to check that out to get all the details. Now I'm gonna be at the North American Reptile Breeders Conference in Tinley Park, Illinois, October 12th and 13th. So if you're gonna be heading out there, be sure you say hello. Now if there's a species you would like to see me cover in future episodes of Tarantula Tuesday, feel free to leave that suggestion down below in the comments. This was another species a lot of people were suggesting I cover, so I'm glad I was able to help you out there. The list is getting pretty long. There's hundreds of species of tarantulas, so it's gonna take me a while to get to all of them, but I'm moving the ones that are suggested the most to the top of the list. Now, if you enjoy these species-specific care and husbandry videos, then tap or click right there so you can watch some more. And if you want a tour of my collection, just tap or click right there. And if you don't wanna do either of those, that's okay, because I will see you next Tuesday.